now why do we need to classify anything what is the reason for you know classifying uh because uh each element has like different properties okay each element has different properties so what so they might like react differently combine differently okay so yet why do we need to classify them if they have different properties then we should not be classifying them okay we should be studying each element individually um to make our study easier now okay. how is it how is it made easier because we group we group the similar elements uh, the, the similar properties element together okay okay so what happens is it becomes very 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 easy to study like what we study nowadays if if you have the periodic table open okay you'll see that group 1 in the periodic table is lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium francium you'll study that all of them all of them the valence electron the outermost shell electron is one okay all of them have one electron in the outermost shell then number okay. two they all have a valency of one they all are soft metals which can be cut with a knife okay so what happens is now when you have them grouped together as a group then when you study this you know the properties of one two three four five six elements together mm -hmm. that is why we need to classify it otherwise studying each and every you know element would become very 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 difficult for us mm. now who were the people who started classifying the first person noteworthy person who started classifying it is Dobevaina. his law is known as the law of triads during his time very few elements were known so what did he do he grouped three elements together i'm taking hypothetical elements elements a elements b element c he grouped them together according to increasing atomic weight in his time protons neutrons were not known so he arranged them in uh, uh, according to increasing atomic weight and then what did they saw see that the weight of the middle element is nearly the average of the first and the last okay okay so this was a law of triads he was able to identify three triads but when new elements were getting discovered the elements could not be fitted into the triad because triad as the name goes three okay so his law failed then another fellow came okay another chemist came his name is newland now newland gave his law of octaves now do you play music oh i've heard that you are a very good dancer uh yeah i do dance okay so law of octaves is what the octaves is the musical notes okay in english it would be i hope i'm making the correct spelling i'm not a very good person in music do re mi fa so la ti do okay and in hindi sa re ka ma pa da ni sa you can see that 
वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन द एथ नोट इज द सेम आफ्टर दैट द एथ नोट कीप्स ऑन रिपीटिंग सो मिस्टर न्यू लिन से द सेम थिंग अबाउट द एलिमेंट ही सेट दैट वेन यू अरेंज द एलिमेंट्स अकॉर्डिंग टू इंक्रीजिंग एटमिक वेट ओके when you have arranged it according to increasing atomic weight what mm-hmm. is going to happen just l- like the octaves the musical notes the eighth element will have the same property okay like okay. do is a do sa is a sa okay so they will have same property but okay. again his problem was what during his time very few elements are discovered not all of them were discovered i think only around 57 or 58 were discovered mm-hmm. so he kept on arranging the elements okay till calcium the law is valid till calcium the law is valid but for the heavier elements what happened is heavier elements he kept on placing them one after the other according to the atomic weight so the element here and the element here their properties were not matching okay mm-hmm. one was a non metal and together with a non metal a metal was grouped so now this grouping also did not work okay so his law also failed okay. now now came a hard working fellow whose law is actually we study till date okay the it is the extension of his law that we read till now the fellow's name is mendeleev okay he was a chemist he was a teacher and he was you know he was unable to explain to the children what to do so he did a little bit of a hard work like i have always said there is no substitute to hard work okay so what he did is he made cards for every element he actually did it in those times there were no computers no laptops to you know just find out the properties and all so he went from one book to another he kept on reading every book and like let's say hydrogen is an element whatever was known about hydrogen during that time the weight the physical properties the boiling points the melting points the chemical properties he jotted down everything all those known properties at that time on the card Mm-hmm. and he did not do for just one element he did it for all elements that were known during that time Means okay basically what he did he wrote approximately around more than a, i think 120 books like this for writing for each element property okay would take even if you knew 20 or 30 properties during that time writing for each element would be a big deal and then he arranged them like a pack of cards okay with the least atomic weight during his time also protons and neutrons were not yet discovered mm-hmm. with the least atomic weight on top and the highest atomic weight okay at the bottom and then he said now let's make a table so he sat on his desk and he started playing solitaire okay he placed element a okay the card then he placed element b so he kept on going like this okay and after a certain interval let's say after h he came across the element i which had the same properties as a and then after the next card j had the same properties as b but in the middle he came across a problem he kept on placing now this k could not fit here with c 
the k could not fit with c but the k's property were matching with d so what did they say doberaina one of the biggest mistakes he did not take into account that new elements would be discovered one of the biggest mistakes of newland he also did not take into account that new elements would be discovered this fellow he went one step ahead and said that a new element will be discovered here later on and he also predicted the properties because he was classifying it okay and when you classify it you come to know what is happening to the properties so he predicted the properties when he actually did that first you know everybody was like is this fellow crazy what is he trying to do mm -hmm. okay he basically gave uh, he predicted three elements ekka boron okay ekka aluminium and ekka silicon okay he predicted these three elements which later on went ahead and it was discovered and whatever property he had predicted it came true that is why he became so famous mm -hmm. okay then he kept on going like this he kept on going ahead i j k he placed an l out here now when he came to m and n he saw that the property of m is matching with this one and the property of n is matching with this one though n is of a higher atomic weight n has a greater atomic weight than n so mm -hmm. he placed m out here he said and classified and classifying according to the properties so the properties should match okay later on when atomic numbers were discovered what was the, what were the atomic numbers the discovery of protons the discovery of electrons the discovery of neutrons when all these things were discovered it was proved that he had placed them correctly okay so two things one per, a person needs for success one is hard work one is smart work so he worked hard by making all these cards it must have taken him a lot of time to make all these cards and he did smart work when placing it is he left gaps he switched the places of the elements and the modern periodic table is nothing but an extension of the uh, mendeleev's periodic table theek mm -hmm. hai now if you look at the table that you study the table that we study it is made like this there is a small rectangle here which has two elements in each row then there is a huge rectangle here which has 10 elements in each row then there is a rectangle here which has six elements in each row and then there is one small box on top out here and one box could either be in this position or here depending upon book to book and the other last one is there are two rows like this with 14 elements each mm -hmm. okay now this has been arranged according to a totally different property at all okay i'll teach you that new new the what we call the new way of writing the electronic configuration till date you must have written the electronic configuration as 2 1 2 2 2 4 2 8 2 8 1 okay yeah here it changes now if i look when we go from left to right when we we'll go from left to right we come across 18 groups group 1 to group 18 so group 1 and 2 are here 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 
11, 12, 5 here. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 are here. Okay. And when we go like this, we come across 7 periods. Okay. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 periods. This mm -hmm. one, this one has, this one has only metals. But these metals are kind of soft metals. These ones are the metals that you have actually studied about, malleable, ductile. These metals show these property. This one on top, on this side has non-metals. Okay. On a zigzag line, it has metalloids. And then here it has metals. And the group ends with noble gases or inert gases. Okay. Take care. Here, the two series that we have, one series is known as the lanthanoid series. Okay. The other series is known as the actinoid series. And this one is known, also known as the transition elements. And this one is known as the inner transition elements. Okay. <clears throat> now. Let's look at two groups. Okay, so you have the periodic table with you? Yeah. Okay, so let's look at, let's look at the group one, which I talked about right now. Okay. okay. Group one, we have lithium. Okay. Achha, let me, let me tell you, there are some problems in this table also. This is also not a perfect table. One is the position of this hydrogen out here. Now, mm -hmm. hydrogen can come here. It has the properties of this one as well as the properties of this one. Mm -hmm. So, we did not know where to place it. So, that is why you'll see in most of the playbooks, hydrogen is placed right in the middle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Helium is the element whose electronic configuration ends with a 2. All other noble gases, the electronic configuration ends with an 8. Okay. So, again, this helium, though the position is correct, but why a 2 comes with 8s, we still have not been able to figure that out. Okay. Okay. So, maybe later on, someone would come up with a new one who could explain, you know, why is this limitation still there out here? Yeah. Now, group 1, lithium, okay, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium. This is in period number 2, period number 3, period number 4, period number 5, period number 6, period number 7. Now, generally, we do not study periodic number 7. Because period, period 7 has what? All radioactive elements. Okay. Radioactive mm -hmm. elements, I am sure you know that, what they are? Uh, I know some of them. Yeah. Okay. What they do is they break down and then there is a loss in mass and that loss of mass produces energy. You have studied okay. that. There is no what? You have studied till there that there is no what? Uh, we, we never really like went into radioactive elements. Okay. Now, here, if I look at, if I look at the valence electron, valence electrons is the number of electrons in the outermost shell. All of them have one electron in the outermost shell. All of these elements, have the ability to lose one electron and become positively charged. 
So mm -hmm. all of them have a valency of one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if I look at lithium, lithium has two electronic shells. Okay. One which has two electrons out here and then the second one which has one electron. In the middle you have the nucleus. When you go to you can you can you know actually verify it with the period number period number two means two shells period number three would mean k shell l shell m shell period number four would mean k l m n shell so what is happening is as you go down as you go down the group oh Look at the shape, how it changed. I'd say it was an ink to shape. Okay. Now, as you go down the group, a new shell is added. Now, when the new shell is added, what is happening to the size of the atom? It's increasing. Yeah. Now, I'll, I'll make it like this. The nucleus is positive here. In the first one, the electron is close to the nucleus. In the second one, the valence electron goes further away. In the third one, the valence electron goes still further away. In the fourth one, the valence electron is still further away. Keeps on going further away. Now, positive and negative, what do they do? Do they attract each other or do they repel? Uh, they attract each other. There is attraction between them. Now, where is the attraction the most? At the top or at the bottom? At the top. Exactly. So when you go down the group, the attraction between the nucleus and the valence electron decreases. Okay. okay. Now, when this attraction decreases, what do you think about the bond between the nucleus and the electron? Where is the bond strong and where is the bond weaker? The bond is stronger at the top. Exactly. So the strength of the bond between the positive and the negative decreases when we go from top to bottom. So mm -hmm. if the bond decreases, who would easily lose the electron? The top one or the bottom one? The bottom one. Exactly. So loss of electrons becomes easier when we go down the group. Now, mm -hmm. a metal has the ability to lose electron. That is why it is a metal. So the ability to lose electron is increasing, is maximum here. So, according to you, who would be the most metallic? The top element or the bottom element? The bottom elements? Yes. Okay. So, the metallic character is maximum here. Now, opposite to metallic character is the non-metallic character. So, the non-metallic character decreases. Mm -hmm. So, understood this one? Yeah. Now. Now let's go to group number 17. Group number 17 is known as halogens. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it has fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and we'll go till acetatine. Acetatine check if acetatine is AS or AT. Uh, it's AT, I think. Okay. Yeah, it's it. Now, this is period number two, period number three, period number four, period number five, period number six. If I look at the valence electrons, if we look at the valence electrons, all of them have seven electrons in the outermost shell. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, all of them have an ability to gain one electron to gain the octate structure. That means their valency would be negative one because all of them have the ability to gain an electron. 
the element has the ability to gain electron and becomes E negative. Mm -hmm. okay. Now likewise, what we studied a while ago, the first one has two shells. When we keep on going down, the number of shells increases. Okay, the number of shells three and four. So what is happening to the size? It's increasing. Increasing. The positive and the negative are closed. The positive and negative go further away. Okay, like this. When the size increases, the valence electron goes further away. Where is the attraction more? At the top or the bottom? At the top. That means the attraction decreases when we go down. Now here... It attracts electrons. Here yeah, it attracts electrons. So if the attraction is decreasing, the ability to gain electron would decrease. Yes. Okay. And the ability to gain electron is a non-metallic property. So the non-metallic property decreases. The non-metallic property decreases. Mm -hmm. So this becomes an ultra thing out here. Out here, the most metallic element, you'll find it at the bottom. Okay? Mm -hmm. And out here, the most non-metallic element, you'll find it out here. Okay. Okay, now if I take group 14, okay, here you will be able to see what I am talking about. We talked about metallic character increasing when we go down the group and the non-metallic character decreasing when we go down the group. Okay, group 14 yeah. if you look at it, it is carbon, first element. Carbon, uh, silicon, yeah. check, germanium, yeah. and then tin. tin, and then lead. Okay, this is germanium only, right? Yeah. Okay, now, the first one is a non-metal, and then silicon is a metalloid. Okay, germanium is a metalloid tin and lead are metals so what is happening you can see for yourself out here when you are going down the group when you are going down the group here you are getting the metal and here you are getting the non-metal mm -hmm. so see non-metallic character decreases metallic character increases Okay. Only group 17 is a group that has, you know, only non-metals out there. Okay. Okay. Now, yeah. now let's see what happens when we go across. Let's take period number two. Period number two, we have lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, Okay, the noble gas, we will not consider it right now. This is group okay. number one, group number two, group number 13, group number 14, 15, 16, 17. Check, this is how it is given? Uh, yeah, that's it. Now, if you remember the electronic configuration, the electronic configuration is a 2-1, 2-2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 6, 2, 7. Take okay? it? Yeah. So the valence electrons are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay? So this is valence electrons. Let me write down the atomic number also. Now here, these are arranged according to atomic numbers. Huh? In the modern periodic table, we had already discovered protons and all. 
what is a proton, what is an electron and all. So the mm -hmm. atomic number is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. Now atomic number tells us the number of protons in the nucleus. Number of protons is 3 positive. Protons are positively charged. Yeah. Okay. 7 positive, 8 positive, 9 positive. And valence electrons are negatively charged. The electrons mm -hmm. are negatively charged. Now, I want you to look here and here. Okay. So, here we are. What is happening is the shell is remaining the same. The positive charges in the nucleus is increasing. The negative charges in the valence shell is increasing. So when we are going from left to right, what is happening to the attractive force between the nucleus and the valence electrons? Mm. It's staying the same. It increases. It is like, you know, it is like I have three magnets in one place, okay? Mm -hmm. Or I have nine magnets in one place. Whose mm -hmm. attractive force will be more? The nine magnets. Okay. So these nine magnets have seven nails around it. Has seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven nails. These three magnets has one nail around it. So obviously, when you will keep the magnets together, its magnetic strength increases. So it is going to attract the nails towards itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. So likewise, the same thing out here. When these positive charges, the positive charges are inside the nucleus, it is not spread around. So when the positive charges increases, okay, obviously the attractive force is going to increase because the shell is the same. Shell is the same. All of them have only two shells. Mm -hmm. So what happens is if the attractive force increases, the size is certainly going to decrease. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. If there is attraction, they are going to pull the, the electrons towards itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, now, that is why you see, Abhi, a while ago, what we had studied, when the size increases, the metallic character increases, but the non-metallic character decreases. Ab mm -hmm. Here, the size is decreasing. If the size is decreasing, the metallic character should decrease. Opposite. Increased. Yeah, and the non-metallic <laughs> character should increase. Take a look. Lithium is a metal. Beryllium is a metal. Boron is a metal. Carbon non-metal. Nitrogen non-metal. Oxygen non-metal. Fluorine non-metal. <laughs> so... What has happened? The non-metallic character is increasing. Now, the non-metallic character is nothing but ability to lose electrons. Ability to lose electron increases when we go from left to right. Ability mm -hmm. to gain electrons. Metallic character is gain electrons. So, ability to gain electrons decreases when we go from left to right. Uh, okay. Okay. So, this, in, 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 in very, very brief, is uh, what I have done is I have explained the periodic table to you. So once more, very first, who was the first person who tried to give us the periodic table? Uh, Dober Reiner. Okay. How many elements did he place together? Uh, three. Three. And his law was known as the? Law of triads. Okay. Then the next one, who was the next one? Uh, Newland. And his law was known as the? Law of octaves. Okay. 
And then who was the third one? Mendeleev. Okay. Uh, his, 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 uh, that is also known as the short form of periodic table. Okay. Okay. And then the last one is known as the modern periodic law. The recent one? Yeah, the recent one is either known as the long form of the periodic table or it is known as the uh, modern periodic law. Okay. How many blocks can you straight away see in a modern periodic uh, table? Uh, four. Four blocks. Well, yeah, four yeah. blocks, right. How many groups are there? There's 18 groups. And how many periods are there? Seven. Seven, okay. Now, on which side of the periodic table do you find the metals? On the left side. And on which side do you find the non-metals? On the very right. And where are the noble gases? Uh, beside the non-metals to the right. Yeah, the group 18. Yeah. Where are the transition elements found? Uh, in the middle group with the metals. Hmm. Where is the inner transition element? Uh, in the two in the box that's below the metals, the separate yes. one. Why why are they known as inner transition elements? Is because you know they're plugged out from here. From here this series comes, and from here this series comes. That is why they are known as inner transition elements. Oh, okay. okay. The inner transition elements is uh, further divided into two blocks. What are the two blocks? Uh, hydrogen and helium. No. Inner transition. Oh. oh, oh, the lanthanoid series and the actinoid series. Perfect. And then how many elements per row do we have in the group one and two? Uh, group one and two, we have six mm. we have only two elements it is as it is saying group one and two so per row oh. only two elements out here per row how many elements um six right out here per row how many elements nine ten ten one oh, two yeah. three four count we need to count three also three is also counted okay mm -hmm. Out here, how many elements per row? Uh, here there is 14. 14. When we go down, what happens to the size? Uh, the size increases. Increases. When we go like this, what happens to the size? Uh, the size decreases. Okay. Now. A person who has understood the valency and the size can, you know, has understood half of chemistry. That has always mm -hmm. been my belief. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because all the chemical properties depends upon these things only. Most of the physical properties also depends on the valency. That is the electronic configuration and the size. Mm -hmm. Take care. So, when the size decreases, which character increases? Metallic character or non-metallic character? Uh, metallic character? Oh, wait, non-metallic. Wait, as size increases? Mm -hmm. Okay, si okay. You talk, let's talk about size increases first. When size okay. is... So when size increases, metallic character increases and non-metallic character decreases. Yeah. And then when size decreases, Metallic character decreases and non-metallic character increases. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay. Oh, I'm writing the same thing. Okay. Non-metallic character increases. So that is why out here on group 17, the first element out here is the most non-metallic. And we want to look at this period number seven. This one is the most metallic. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, did you get the hang of how classification is done, how it has been made easier for us to study? Yeah, I understood it. Okay. So, in the next class, then I will teach you the discovery of protons, electrons, neutrons, nucleus. Nothing was discovered once upon a timer.
people did not know about protons and electrons and neutrons and nowadays the so more things are being discovered the best discovery or as to date is energy is matter and matter is energy mm -hmm. okay so we'll go to that okay, okay. in the next class yeah. chalo then okay. bye bye take care bye thank you pleasure